In this video, I'm gonna show you the three positions that if you train this at home, it's gonna dramatically improve your one-handed backhand. The biggest problem is generally when we take a lesson to try and improve something, we take a lesson or we learn something, and the only time we do it is on the court. And basically, the difference between players that have better balls than you is they spent more time getting better reps than you, or more reps. And so the key to start overcoming that is instead of just only thinking we can train on the court, is start training at home. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the three positions that are crucial for you to on your one-handed backhand and then the exact drills and way you can train that at home so you start seeing better results on the court quicker. So let's get started. So you can see here I have two of what I think is some of the best one-handed backhands in the business with Stan Wawrinka and team. So the very first position that we want to talk about is loading our hip. And the reason why this is important is all a tennis stroke is, and specifically with the one-handed backhand is, we're taking power from the ground, we're transferring that power up through our body and then out through our hand into the racket. And that's what makes it quote unquote effortless, where people talk about, and I myself talk about like how you can hit this effortless forehand. It's really you learning to transfer the power from the ground all the way up through your body. And this is why this first move is so important, because if you don't do this move, you haven't even created or gathered or stored energy. And the way we wanna do this is store our energy in our hip. So you're gonna notice that for both players, right before they're about to hit, Stan's going to right there, touchdown. And what I mean by touchdown is touchdown with this foot because he's gonna start storing, and you can see him storing weight into his back foot. And what's important to notice here as he's moving forward, he's storing weight, and you can see how he's gathering the weight and his body's going back. The reason why that's important is because you can see it right here, the body's going back, is because when he's ready to unload that weight, he can take all this energy that he's storing in his back hip uh, right here, and he's gonna send it forward. It's just like if we're gonna push against the ground down, then we push against the ground, we're gonna go up. So hopefully that's really clear. I want you to see the exact same thing happens with team here. His first move is he's squaring his body, and right here, again, touchdown. He's storing that weight, and you can see how he's storing that weight. He's going back, and you can see how this leg is up. Same thing with Stan here. He's storing his weight in his back hip. The more you can store that weight in your back hip, that takes care of creating or it stores the power that you can use. One other really important thing that I want everybody to look at right here is there's not a lot of movement with the arm. Really, when Stan has his racket, his racket's in the center of his body here. And as he moves to store, all he's doing is turning his body by loading his hip and it keeps the racket pretty much in the same place. Same thing. You can see from this back view, Team hasn't taken his racket back. By just storing in his back hip, boom, that puts his racket in a much better position to be prepared to handle the ball. The second position that we wanna talk about is what I call crossing the line. This is one position that I didn't do enough of when I was learning one-handed back in the beginning. Now that I do it more, it makes such a huge difference. What I mean by crossing the line, if you notice with Stan right here, you'll see a little bit more with team, his right shoulder is on the left side of his body. So again, you can look at it right here. You'll see the same thing with team. If I draw a line right about there as he moves, his right shoulder and left shoulder are gonna switch, meaning the right shoulder is gonna come over here, the left shoulder is gonna be over here across the line. So let's see exactly how that looks. Ready? Boom. You can see how right here, his shoulder, let me clear everything, his shoulder, right shoulder is on the right side of his body, and his left shoulder is on the right side of the body. They've changed. He's coiled up his body. And so with these two elements, he has uh, weight loaded and stored in his hips and his body is coiled, ready to uncoil and transfer that weight. And so both of them, you can see how they're about to step forward, transferring that weight and uncoiling. And so what you're gonna see here is he's gonna drop his racket and you can really clearly see that same action of the right shoulder on the left side here with uh, Stan. And as he drops his racket, now he's gonna start uncoiling his hips, which then sends his shoulder to the same position where it started from. And so we're gonna see this hips uncoil and you're gonna see this shoulder rotate back. And the reason why this second position is so important is because this is what drives the racket through the ball. So many players, myself included, in the beginning thought, okay, I take her back and I just rip it with my arm. And then you feel like, Oh, it takes so much strength to hit a one-handed backhand. When you do it the correct way, you realize like, wow, it doesn't take that much effort to hit a great one-handed backhand. And so what I mean by this is that his hips are gonna drive his shoulders and because of this 
this connection is gonna pull the racket into contact. So right here, you can see his hips moving. I'm just gonna go one at a time, so you can just look at the hips, how the hips are rotating, and then we're gonna clear that out. Now let's look at his shoulder, shoulder rotating, and I want you to see the uh, relationship between the arm and the shoulder here. When you watch it, the arm's moving because the shoulder is pulling it. And when he gets the contact, boom, you're gonna see this shoulder back, if we have that line basically here, back on the right side of his body, and you see this shoulder on the left side of his body. So let's look at team, exact same thing. The racket's gonna drop. From here, he's gonna start uncoiling the shoulder, or excuse me, uncoiling the hips and then the shoulder. So let's just look at the hips for a second so we can isolate that movement. You can clearly see how his hips rotate right here. Let's look at it one more time. Hips are rotating. Now let's look at the shoulder area, okay? And because that hips is gonna pull that shoulder, boom. You can see how that shoulder's back on the right side of the body, the right shoulder. And because of that, boom, contact's being made here and you can see where the shoulder is. Now, this is really important because this is what's driving the racket through the, to the contact. Where most players make a mistake with their one-handed back end is they continue this rotation, meaning that Stan rotates here, and I want you to watch his shoulder. If we watch it from here, the shoulder doesn't move that much. The arm's allowed to extend through the ball, and then on the follow-through of the racket now pulls the shoulder around. Let's watch team. Okay, very little shoulder movement from here as he extends through the ball and the racket actually pulls the shoulder around. The third position is internal and external shoulder rotation, meaning that when Stan has his racket up here, he's gonna use his left hand to push the racket down, which creates this rotating in the shoulder action, this internal rotation which stretches this part of his shoulder. And you'll see that here. He pushes down, that stretches his shoulder, and then it allows for when he starts rotating his hips to pull his shoulder, like we talked about, that he creates this external, meaning the external uh, forearm and shoulder rotation this way. I use my thumb to kind of really dictate where it shows or where it's going. And so you can see how it's going up. Now, with that, one mistake that I think a lot of players make is they create this internal to external rotation through the contact brushing up. But if you watch Stan right here, he's rotating and then from right here, watch these frames right here. There's just not a lot of rotating up anymore. Pretty much through contact, it hasn't rotated and then suddenly it picks up steam and then rotates over. Meaning that as he pulls this rack, he's rotating up and he holds it through contact to extend and then after he finishes the external rotation. Let's look at team, do the exact same thing. He drops it, uses that left hand here to create this uh, internal shoulder rotation, pulls, and you can see here, pulling, 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 and you can see the level of the racket pretty much does not deviate that much. And then from here, now you see the racket starting to go around. And these are the keys to having a one-handed back end. Now, let's go figure out how we can do this at home. So here we are in my office. Now, the things you're gonna need are just a rubbery band like this. Now, I have a few already hooked up to make this go quicker, but really, you just need one. You need to be able to kind of hook it inside a door or put it around something that's really stable to do these drills. Now, this is really important because what the band's gonna do is create resistance. And that resistance is gonna help you really learn these positions a lot better and start to feel them. I feel like sometimes if we just shadow, that a lot of times you don't feel the positions. You're just kind of out in the air. You don't feel this resistance. And so it's really important that you have one of these. Now let's get started. The very first drill we wanna work on is starting to load the weight in the back hip. And so I have this already set up here and all I wanna do is grab it just like this. So it's kind of like me holding a racket here, you know? And what I wanna do is in my ready position, I'm on my toes and I'm gonna drop back and feel that weight engaging the back hip. Now, if you just turn like this, it's not the same thing. I don't feel my back hip engaging. I wanna load weight, and to load weight, we have to push down. So if I step back and load, the weight is now loaded in my back hip. So the drill we wanna do is hold your hand out here, and all I wanna do is pull the racket back. Now this looks like I have two hands, but you can do it just but one, and pull the racket back, okay? And pull the racket back, I feel my hip loaded. 
And to give you context, like me holding a racket right here, if I was hitting a backhand, I'd pull the racket back. And you can really see how I'm loaded this hip. And the other thing with this is that I haven't really moved my racket. I haven't done anything with my arms. By just pulling the racket back and really turning to load my hip has actually put my racket in a better position to get ready to hit the ball. The second drill is what I call crossing the line that we talked about. Making sure that after I pull the racket back, I start coiling and crossing the line so I can get to this position here. What I mean by this position is having the racket here, so now I can start uncoiling my hips, which moves my shoulder, which moves my racket to contact. So how we're gonna do that is I already have this set up here, and I have this in this position here. Now what I want you to do is make sure when you grab it, you grab it with the bottom part of your hand facing out. What that represents is if I'm holding the racket here and I have it here, you can see the bottom facing out. And so what I wanna do is as I leave this here, I'm gonna start with my hand tucked under my armpit and the hand here, my right hand, is close to my pocket but not all the way. From here, what I'm gonna do is just uncoil my hip. And so you can see it from this position, even though I don't get that resistance, to see how my shoulder's on the right side of my body and as I uncoil, it's gonna to go to the left side. So that's all you need. You don't need a full rotation just like this. That would be incorrect. We wanna go from here to here. And so if we do that from this angle, so you can see the pull, if I pull, boom, okay? Shoulders coming on the right side. It's just coming back to the right side and that's all I need. And this is the second part. Now, the reason why I have my hand under my um, arm is because one of the biggest mistakes that players make with this is that they start going pull and they start pulling this off. So you can see this, feel the space in this release. We wanna keep this nice and tight, meaning that my hips are now driving my shoulder and my shoulders now driving my arm. And so this is a much bigger muscle activating here, getting my racket to contact. The third drill starts combining internal and external rotation. And all that really means is taking my racket here and I'm gonna internal rotate, meaning towards my body, and then externally rotate away from my body. The reason this is important is when you see the racket going back like this, they're using the left hand to push and basically push the racket down to rotate and stretch this. As then they start turning their hips and they make contact and then the arm comes off the body, they start externally rotating away from the body. And that's what you're seeing. So what I wanna do with that is go from here and then as I have my armpit, my hand onto my armpit, I'm gonna go here, I'm getting myself to contact and then I can start lifting my arm away from my body and do the internal to external shoulder rotation. And so if I do it together, contact, rotation, contact, rotation. Knowing that I've already achieved the internal rotation down here, I'm gonna pull my racket to contact, I feel that stretch and I still have this nice sandwich here, and then it starts to come off, got caught there, and it extends. Now if you put it all together, I can do it from right here, pulling back, here. You can see how pulling back, here. And so I would practice this, just sitting here, dropping my weight back, drop it, and here. Now when you go and use it with your racket, you feel as if by having that resistance, everything feels a little lighter and quicker because your muscles are used to having this resistance that isn't as much as a racket. And now when you go back to using the racket, you've developed a little bit of muscle strength to make sure that as you're doing this, your muscles are used to what you're supposed to be doing when you're on the court. You can do this as much as you want at home and practice this and develop the muscle memory. So when you go out to court, this seems like rote memory. You've done it, you've done it so many times. So now when you're on the court, really you're all about organizing your feet and making sure you're getting to the ball to make great contact. Instead of going out to the court, trying to work on your swing and doing those things at the same time. This is how you can accelerate your, your improvement on your one-handed backhand or any of your strokes because you're practicing shadowing with the right techniques at home and then going out to the court tr with your muscles already trained and triggered to do the right thing because you've done the reps, you've done the reps. And if you wanna learn more about how to take your forehands to the next level, go watch this video.